Hi, I'm Kimberly Moses, and I am the founder of Rejoice Essential Publishing. And right now, we are now accepting new clients. Do you have a book, but you want to get published? Do you have ideas and you need help ghostwriting? Do you need an editor? Do you need someone to make your awesome cover that sells, that's going to be eye-catching? Do you need to get your book copyrighted? Do you need your book to be indexed or formatted? We do it all. We distribute books all across the globe at all major retailers. And we also have marketing, a team to put your book out to the masses. Make sure you check out our website at www.republishing.org. That's republishing.org. I'll see you soon. Good morning, everyone. So this is Prophetess Kay. I'm so excited about our guest on today's uh, video. And she is one of my co-authors. Our brand new book that we're going to talk about today is Tested Try, But I've Survived. If you haven't got your copy of the book, go ahead and get the book wherever they sell books at all major retailers, Amazon, Barnes & Nobles. And we just recently signed a contract with Target Books. So I'm so excited to get this book into Target.com. So God is so good. So I'm going to go ahead and bring on my guest this morning, and you guys are going to love her. We're going to be talking about some critical issues today if you guys are underneath an attack in your marriage. And this is going to strengthen you today and also give you encouragement to let you know that God heals. So if you can go ahead and share and tag somebody, and I'm going to bring up the woman of God right now. So on today, woman of God. Hi, how are you? Good. So tell us a little bit about you and your ministry. Well, first of all, I want to apologize. I got some grogginess going on. I've been down and out all week long. This is my first time being able to get up and out and about. So I definitely apologize about that. But um, I am here in the wonderful state of Georgia. I am a mother, a wife, entrepreneur, I sell gourmet coffee as well as organic green teas. I sell extremely affordable, fashionable jewelry. <laughs> and I've just recently started doing event hosting. Okay. So I'm excited about that. That's awesome. So you know what? I definitely need an event planner, somebody to help with all that. So I won't be in contact with that as soon as God gives me the green light. And, you know, I'm telling you guys, you guys, this is the late night pusher. And, you know, she's bleaned out, dicked out, you guys. You definitely want to, you know, connect and get from her. Because I had got some jewelry from her, like, maybe the summertime. And I wore it in my photo shoot. Look, it looked amazing. So thank you for what you're doing, woman of God. Amen. And um, that's so important. So I want to ask you this. This is off topic. Um, but tell us, like, why it's important, like, for women in ministry to look and feel beautiful and confident about themselves. Well, for one, you want people to to see the change in you when you're once you become saved, all old things pass away, behold, everything has become new. And God comes into our life and change us. And we want to look like the royalty that He He has turned us into. Um, another thing is I think it helps a lot of um, self-esteem it helps yeah. with your self-esteem as well um yeah basically <laughs> that's it in a nutshell amen amen so thank you again for what you do so you wrote in the book tested tribe but i survived you wrote about abandonment so tell us a little bit about your chapter well my chapter was about like you said abandonment um, well, before I get started with that, I want to touch bases. I apologize um, on my ministry, which is event hosting. Um, what I do is I host different events um, and give a, a like a little three to five minute segment of open mic for new ministers. I like to invite new people, uh, people that's in the ministry, 
um, just learning how to get their foot in, stand on, you know, their ministry foot or feet, I should say. Um, and I give them anywhere between three to five minutes, either at the beginning of the event that I'm hosting or either at the end of the event to get up there and give a word from God. Um, and with that being said, <laughs> now I get into the book. The book is, um, well, my chapter is about, um, it is about abandonment. Well, I would like to say <laughs> for everyone that's putting anything or anyone in front of God, don't do it. <laughs> Please don't do it because that was the mistake that I made. I don't want to really pinpoint on the separation <laughs> that I went through with my husband, um, although that's what the, the chapter is about, abandonment. But it goes back to me placing him before God, not only placing him before God, but placing the fact that I was married, you know, like color purple eyes married now, placing that before God and getting the big head, becoming prideful with that, <laughs> excuse me, which Pride will lead to a downfall. And that's exactly what ended up happening. He left five months after we got married. He did his little disappearing act and was gone for five years. But in that time frame where he was gone, I was able to reach out and, and repair my relationship with God. Get back to where I was before in my relationship with God, because prior to meeting my husband, I was sold out. There was no secular music, no secular TV in my home, nothing. We would do shut-ins every Friday night, 24 hour shut-ins at my church. Every time the church doors opened, I was there. Tuesday night, Bible study, um, Sundays, early bird service, regular service, 10 o'clock, then late night, you know, um, the evening service, <coughs> excuse me. And then once I got married, stuff started to dwindle down just a tad bit. Um, like I said, I thought I had, I thought I have arrived <laughs> just by getting married. Marriage was everything to me. And it's not just the fact of being married. It was, <coughs> excuse me. It was, I always thought when you find someone to say, to ask your hand in marriage, I've always thought that meant love. So if for me and my heart and my eyes, it was like I found love. I finally found love. That's what marriage was to me. Um, and then another thing with the separation, again, God allowed me to see that he is love. And the Bible tells us. Like it seemed cliche, God is love, love is God. It seemed cliche. But once you start to get the revelation of that, then you will see it's not in marriage. It's not even in another human being. You have to submit yourself to God for him to come in and heal and mend in it and everything that needs to be healed. Um, but yeah, uh, that separation was no joke. <laughs> but the beautiful thing is I found my relationship again with God. I, I, I put him first again. He was back on the pedestal that he was supposed to be. Is there any more you want me to? Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. Sorry about that. I love how, like, in your pain, you ran to God instead of running uh, away. And that's encouraging, you know, that you found the Lord in that. Because, like you said, as soon as the church doors were open, you were right there. You were praying and all that. And I want you guys to take heed to what she's saying because a lot of us have done that, put people before God. I know I have, you know, and anytime we put somebody before God, it's an idol. So thank you for sharing your transparency. But I must ask, were there any like red flags or anything? Because you talk about it in your book. You talk about the, your le the lessons that you learned. Were there any re red flags for the abandonment or just what you went through? The red flags for me would have been the small uh, argument <laughs> that I was like, oh, it'll be okay. Because <laughs> you know me, it's like happy, happy, joy, joy at all times. 
But you have to realize when a person is speaking, you have to attentively listen to that individual because they're saying what they're saying, even if it isn't like in a negative way, if they're not saying it in a negative way, but they're saying it and you hear it more than once, listen, <laughs> because there's a reason why. And for him, he was upset and he kept saying it. He was upset because he felt like I was putting too much money in the collection plate. But of course, people that um, are not, how would I say this? People that are not being guided by God's spirit, they don't really understand. You have to be obedient with your seed sowing. If God tell you, you know, seed time and harvest, you're not going to have a harvest if you don't <laughs> sow no seeds. And you have to, um, your tithe and offering, it, it's a must. It's a must. And like I said, people that don't know God think that, oh, you're giving the money to this man and you don't, but you're being obedient. Mm -hmm. But I would hear that constantly and then find out you know, later on after the five years, God showed me, well, not even after, during it, close to the end, he showed me that my husband was hurt. He was hurt from um, pain from his childhood where his dad was a preacher and he stepped down and he walked out on the family. He abandoned the family. And so he blamed God for that. He blamed God for a lot of the things that happened in his life. And here it is, his wife, <laughs> this woman he done met is in love with this God that he blames for the destruction that happened as a child in his family. So that was some of the, uh, well, a couple of the red flags were the little arguments um, where he just wasn't coming home as often as he should have, um, you know, as a, uh, especially this is we we were still newlyweds. This is only five months into the marriage, and so, like I said, if if they disappear, they do a disappearing act slowly but surely. <laughs> Look out! <laughs> Look out, honey. But like I said, all I can do, I can give you different scenarios, different um examples of things that happen. Um, it wasn't too many. It wasn't because my husband <laughs> was an introvert. He, he still is. <laughs> so he didn't really do too much verbal, verbal talking. He didn't really, you know, he just showed me in his actions and stuff. But all I can say is lean on God. Lean on God. Anybody that's going through it right now, go to God. Go in your prayer closet. Please don't make the mistake that I made because he would tell me later on that I was kind of like beating them over the head with the Bible, which is kind of sort of the same thing as making someone, you know, go to church. You can't make someone want God. God don't even make us want him. He do not. We have a choice. We don't even have to get saved. God forbid if you don't get saved because I'm not going to burn to hell yeah. <laughs> the rest of my existence. But we can't do that to people. So what I would say is <clears throat> excuse me, if you're in a, a, a relationship, you're in a marriage and things aren't going the way that you would de de desire for them to go, um, go in your prayer closet. Go in your prayer closet fast. God will answer you and he will honor you. And let him put it together. Don't don't beat them over the head with the Bible. <laughs> don't force them to go to church. <laughs> I'm telling you, God honors marriage because you and your spouse took the, the time to do it the right way, to get in front of God and say those vows. So God is on your side, believe it or not. God is on your side, but you have to be careful because the enemy is out there and the devil come to kill, steal, and destroy. And what the devil like to do is separate, divide, and conquer. That's what he does. So what you need to do is be in your prayer closet, you fast, and you give it to God and believe it. Stand on that word. Find some scriptures. Stand on that word, and it's going to work for you. I'm telling you, it's going to work for you. Take it from my mistakes. <laughs> don't, don't follow. <laughs> Do not follow. <laughs> so you, you 
my my next question I was going to ask you about how can you heal or overcome abandonment? But you hit on you hit on it about running to God. Unless you want to add some something else to it to that. Um. Yeah. Basically, that is it. That is it. But you have to stay strong in it as well, because again, the enemy is out there and he's going to try to trick you. He's going to have all that negative stuff to say. It was so many people. Prophetess, I tell you, it was so many people. And I know they felt like they were helping me. Some were family members. Some were friends, co-workers. Um, and they kept, oh, girl, you deserve better than that. Okay. He's still going. He came back. I know God got a better man for you out there. Like, no, no. <laughs> God is not telling you to leave your spouse. <laughs> if you are going to believe God's word, you got to believe it. And you have to, you have to stand on it. You got to, you just got to submit yourself to Christ. You have to, because that's what the word said. That's how you resist the devil. You submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. He got to flee. He has to, because God's word is not a lie. <laughs> so, yeah, that's basically what I would say. <laughs> you just got to do whatever it takes to get as close to God as possible, because even those people that think that they are helping you, it's not. It's not good seeds that's being sown. So, and I appreciate your wisdom, and that is so true, because it's like, it's, it's easy to quit. And many people don't realize that you have to stand strong. You want God to restore your marriage, but we have pride and we let that pride get in. And we're like, I don't deserve this and stuff, but you signed up for it, you know? Exactly. So, <laughs> so thank you for bringing it out. Um, so uh, how can we connect with you in your ministry? You can, um, and I, again, I apologize. I had ever intentions on setting up a professional <laughs> profile for this moment, um, but once I got sick, <laughs> that was all she wrote. I tell yeah. you, I was two seconds from going to the hospital. <laughs> but um, everyone can just contact me at cjones3202 at gmail.com, or you can message me through Facebook with Candy Jones. <laughs> So you guys connect with the woman of God. She's a powerful intercessor. She didn't say that as well, but she will pray you through. Okay. You can be in the in your marriage. You need to connect with the woman of God. She will pray you about it. Some stuff. Okay. So towards the glory. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so please get this book. Test the try, but I survived. We barely scratched the surface. You, you can get it at all major retailers and you can read more about uh candy's testimony and what the lord brought her out of and just know god is no respect of a person he did it for candy he can do it for you so thank you so much guys for tuning in and we'll see you next week for another awesome video god bless you everyone